Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. I have Red Shawl over here, Dave Honorado, and today we're here to talk about the impending Guitar Center bankruptcy that was just announced over the past uh, week. Rhett, you want to get, fill us in a little bit? I mean, yeah, this has been unfolding slowly for like the past year or so. Um, Guitar Center, much like Gibson USA, is in massive amounts of debt. Uh, and according to Moody's, they are likely to default on that debt, um, which would push them towards bankruptcy. And if they can't restructure it by the end of the summer, essentially, they're gonna they're gonna default on it and go bankrupt. So, which could mean they get bought out by another financial holding company, which means that would be the third financial holding company in about as many years to buy and take over Guitar Center, um, and or they could just go out of business. I, I thought a lot about this actually over the last few days that since we were gonna get together and talk about this and I was talking with a buddy of mine today about things that have happened at our guitar center, the guitar center I go to, the, the uh, main one in uh, off 85 here in Atlanta. And when I first moved to town 20 years ago um, and I would go into guitar center and I knew every single person that worked in there. I knew they were all musicians from town People, the guys in the drum department were drummers that played in bands, and they were guys that were really good players. Guys in the guitar department could play really well. And any, you know, any question you had about any instrument, pro audio, you name it, there would be pros in there that knew the gear, that could tell you everything about it, and that were real players. And when I went in there the other day, there's one guy that I know. And, and, I mean, most of the people disappeared over the last, I'd say, probably five, six years, really because of management issues, because it's been horribly managed. And, and uh, they, they have not been able to get the, the same kind of inventory. It used to be where they would get things in pro audio to try out, top-of-the-line things. Now it's the pro, there's, there is no pro audio department. You walk in, there's a few monitor speakers with some mics in a case, and some keyboards, and that's pro audio. It's right near, right at the yeah. entrance. Mm -hmm. And so. all the tweeters have been pushed in. Yeah, all the, right. All the speakers. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, you know a lot about Guitar Center. Oh yes. Uh, while I'm a former employee, many years ago, mm -hmm. um, this would have been uh, early 2000s and uh, late late 90s, early 2000s, yeah. when Rhythm City owned it originally, and then transition when GC bought them. I was there during that, and. Um, yeah, from the get go. I mean, I I can tell you right off the bat, even when the first uh, couple of years when they GC took that store over, you know, there was a huge shift in management and just the style of the way they the way they run that store. This to me, this is no surprise. In fact, I'm actually surprised they've gone this long without yeah. any problems, really. Um, and and I've I've told this to a lot of people that I know during the years. I said as soon as that company went public, that was really the death nail of that mm -hmm. company in my mind because the, it just became a Walmart. You yeah. know, really. I mean, and and all of the pro guys that. I knew that we're going there. We're like, well, I don't need to go there now because there, one, there's nobody left to talk to that right. knows what they're talking about. Yeah, inventory depleted down to just I could go online and get better stuff at better deals. Yeah, and that's what it's they junk. Do. I mean, pretty yeah. much, yeah. it's all right. pro prosumer. Right. You might and you might get lucky once in a while. Walk. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm no. not not trying to be an elitist about it. No, but not at if all. you're a professional musician and you go to Guitar Center, you know you could still get ten years ago. All the top of the line stuff they could get you whatever you wanted. Well, not in a certain degree. There's there's yeah. things that they could just couldn't get. Yeah. But for the most part, a lot of the stuff they'd st they'd stock decent stuff. They'd have good used stuff in there. I mean, now it's just there's just nothing. Yeah, I mean the used stuff. Even when I was working there, was much more. Um, you know, they really went after more used stuff because they yeah. knew the value of, of the trade-ins and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and the last four or five times I've even gone there, you know, in the last six months. I mean, I could case that store within five minutes, and there's not one thing in there really used yeah. that that it's either way overpriced for what it is, or there's just it, it's just average stuff that you could get on wherever. For or it's so beat up and yeah, in terrible condition you would and never yeah, touch yeah. it. It's interesting because they just redid the store last yeah, year yeah, from right. scratch, yeah, yeah. and they eliminated the pro audio room. They eliminated the drum department for for the most part. Yeah. There is no real you know they no. have a room for snare drums essentially and. There, there are no individual departments. It's all open air. Yeah. And everything used to be compartmentalized, which was great. When you went in the drum department, you didn't have to hear oh, God. people tr playing bass for three hours. 
Guitar now, Center Symphony, man. You walk in there and it's just like a barrage <laughs> of Metallica and, and Leonard Skinner for... I, I don't know how anybody works there. Cacophony. Do you, yeah. do you just like learn to tune out? Well, I can even tell you when I was there, when we did even have separate departments, it was still... You go in there on a Saturday and you just want to... Oh, God. Out. I mean, you did. You got to a point where you just it just became background noise. It just You were like, okay, it's like, it's like working at an airport or something. You just... You get used to it. You know? the, one of the funniest things I ever saw a few years ago when they opened the Guitar Center in Times Square, some guy went in there with his iPhone and just had it in selfie mode and just walked around with pretty much every available amp was taken by somebody, <laughs> right. who, all playing like gent like lines and this crazy stuff and it was just a it was almost white noise. There was yeah. so much guitar playing going on. <laughs> you know, I I have a friend that was one of my old students named Rob uh, that used to work at Guitar Center for years. He was one of their longest employees. And I would go in there and buy stuff from Rob all the time. He's pretty much the only person I would buy things from. And he worked in the pro audio, he, to, he worked in the pro audio department, but if I needed drum heads or something, Rob would walk around the store and get things for me. And he used to say things like, you don't need that. Uh, no, you, you don't need that. When are you ever gonna use it? He would actually talk me out of buying things that I thought I might need. And he would also call me if there was something good that came in. I have a, a Yamaha drum kit, recording custom drum kit, that's, um, you know, it was used, beat up, but it was an incredibly great deal, an amazing sounding kit. Rob called me up, he's like, hey, recording custom kit just came in, really cheap, That you want to buy this. And I would go right down there on his recommendation, I would get it. And when you don't have people like that, this I mean, this is really, he had his own clientele of people that would come in because he worked there. And there's, when Dave was there, I would go in and I know if Dave said something was good, then that, that would be something I would get. And, and when you lost that, all these stores are really, they're run by people in the community. It's not like yeah. they just hire anybody off the street. It's all musicians that are local to, to wherever. If you're in the LA store, if you're in the Chicago, if you're here in Atlanta, it doesn't matter. They're the people that live in those cities, work there, and people know them, and they have relationships with them. And when it started, when they lost the incentive to to keep these people because of the management issues, they wouldn't pay people fairly. Uh, and once you lost that, there was no reason to go in there, which is really why I almost never go in there. Right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was always the case with me. I mean, I grew up in a small shop, so I always, to me, the small shops were always, the mom and pops were always the places you wanted to go because one, you walk in the door, they know who you are, and like you said, a good store is going to go, hey, I know what you're into, and this is cool, I know you're going to dig this kind of thing, and and so that got lost, you know, that became the, the that, you know, and even, you know, early on, like you said, with, with, with the first kind of incarnation of Guitar Center when they took over and started here, you know, you still had guys that were working there that were working either for they the old store, at yeah. uh, Rhythm City, or they yeah. worked at other shops, like me, I came from some other stores, and so you brought those customers with you, you know, that when they started paying you, you know, minimum wage and started basically hiring high school kids to do stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. that's when you started seeing this influx of like people, people would still come in, but they would go, I don't want to deal with anybody but you because nobody else here is, right. knows what, you know. And I'm not trying to tra trash young guys who are starting out and working in a music store too, because you got to learn somehow and that's yeah. just how it is, you know. So, but you know, if you come in and the guy already knows that, hey, you know, you've bought $10,000 worth of stuff from us sure. and I know what you own. You know, that's the little different because you feel like one you feel like okay These guys actually give a crap about who they're selling to and their clientele and they're gonna stock the store a certain way Yeah, you know like when you know when my dad had a music store You know he knew his clientele really well and he was like he would go out and find like somebody would say hey I want to you know, I want to send me Les Paul custom He'd get on the phone or he'd go look for them and buy one and bring it in the store sure. for, for the guy to buy it Even if he didn't make a lot of money on the deal it just made your client base that yeah. much more loyal because they were like, hey, this guy really goes out of his way to find me stuff. And and there's that camaraderie, you know, I mean, musicians, we all kind of want to hang out and shoot the shit and just sort of, you know, do our thing. And you want to go to a hip store right. yeah. that you walk in. Well, you go and, there, you go there because you want to hang out. Thing. It's it a is. social it thing. Is. You know, it and is. Guitar Center has no social, no. it's like walking into hi-fi buys, you know, it's like, right. okay, if you know XYZ, I want to buy this cable and I, it's just, okay, I need to buy this. You go in there two minutes, you look around like, oh, there's nothing here, and you walk out. You know, whereas if you go in there and they either have a bunch of stuff that you like and you've got to take 20 minutes to see everything you want to look at, 
or you have guys going, hey, man, hold on a second. I got something in the back room. Let me show you this. You know, yeah. They keep, you know, that, that keeps you there and it keeps you interested. And it, it makes you feel like, hey, I'm, I'm kind of part of a scene. You know, it's like yeah. it's like a music, a local music scene as it is. The guitar store or a music store or an audio store that's, that's you know, knows what they're doing. That's part of it. You know, it's like you have all these local artists who hang out at music stores and you don't get that much anymore. I mean, there's still some small stores here in town that do that, and there's mm -hmm. and there's some new stuff like Righteous and some guys in town that are trying to, you know, kind of specialize in a niche, you know, kind yeah. of market. But as a whole, you know, you saw a Guitar Center come into all these towns and sort of just ruin all of these small shops that yeah. couldn't compete. Yeah. And it just it just put every a lot of the pros and the local uh, uh, people at the point of like, well. You know, all right, now I gotta go to Guitar Center. So I'll go to Guitar Center, but you didn't get the service, you didn't, you know, right. get any of that that other stuff. Even, I mean, so when I pl started playing guitar, like 2003 is when I started playing guitar, my dad and I would go to the Guitar Center, the one in Gwinnett that used to be Mars. Yeah, Mars, yeah. right? And, and so, but when I started playing, it was Guitar Center by then. But even then, it still had that atmosphere. There were still pros that worked there, there's still guys that were like, willing to help you out and especially for me as someone who was new to the instrument and my dad who didn't wasn't a player and didn't know anything about music yeah. like we would go to a guitar center on a Saturday and spend three hours in the acoustic room just trying out different acoustics and yeah. guys would okay try this out okay so this is what this price range sounds like okay let me put here's a three thousand dollar acoustic here's a six hundred dollar acoustic and we would go and my dad and I actually bonded over time spent in guitar center yeah. now I can't get out of Guitar Center fast enough. No, I only right. go if I absolutely need something. If I'm on the road, you know, especially you for an extended, I need cables. Yeah. You know, or it's yeah. eight thirty on a on a Friday, and you have a gig, and you have to get it. Yeah, right. Or, no or, or yeah, you're out of town, you're on the road, right. and you and something goes down, and so it this this is it hasn't been all of my experience in the past couple of years. I know there still are qualified people that work in Guitar Center, but yeah. most of my Guitar Center experiences in the last few years. When I've gone in to look at something substantial, if it's an amp or a pedal, or recently it's been things like recording, you know, studio monitors and stuff like that, I've actually, you know, somebody will come up, an associate will come up and ask me, oh, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm looking for this, you know, the, the UA Apollo interface. And then I find that I actually have to start explaining to the Guitar Center employee oh, yeah. features <laughs> yes. and why I need it. And it's like, oh, well, have you looked at this? Like, no, I haven't looked at this because those are two completely different products that aren't related to each other in any way. So yeah. that, and I think that has changed because of their hiring practices. It used to be, oh, yeah. right, that they would hire people that had previous experience or, you know, knew a little bit of thing, even if you only were a guitar player or a drummer or whatever. Now, it's my understanding that they were pretty much just hire... They'll hire anybody. Anybody. When Guitar Center switched over for Rhythm City... Virtually every guy that was in there worked at other stores around town that I that I knew. Right. And I'd right. seen him around. You right. used to work at Famous Bargain years ago, back yeah. in the nineties. Galaxy all I, and Galaxy. Yeah. I knew do Dave from these from these places. And I used to hear Dave play and I said, This guy's an amazing player. So when he told me about something, oh you should check this out, I listened to him. And there were places like like um, like Midtown Music. There used to be yeah. a store here called Midtown Music, which I bought, oh man, probably 20 amp heads, 20 yeah. cabinets. Anytime you went into this place, uh, they would have seven or eight Marshall cabinets that he would sell for 500 bucks used. Always top of the line stuff. Heads from the 70s. Yeah. Always had stuff in stock. And yeah, I, I was a I was a customer for 10 years before I worked there. And and it was one of those things where I worked there because it was the best guitar shop in town. And I knew, you know, as crazy of a place that it was, it was the best guitar play place in town. And so, and all the pro guys went there. Every, I saw, I met Rage Against the Machine there. Yeah, I mean, you'd walk in and Brendan O'Brien would be there, or it would be, you know, Rick Richards from the Satellites, or it'd be, you know, it was just like this plethora of, you know, I mean, I, Dave Harris, Clay Cook, all these people that, you know, and they would just go there because everybody knew they were like, there's always at least something I, at Midtown I can I want yeah. you know or if I you know because you, 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 it was that thing of like you, you know you didn't have the internet he didn't have a, a web page so you had to drive there like well maybe, maybe I'll score something yeah. you know? and it, that was like it was like the you know like I'm going to get my drugs man because you know what's Dave got today you know it's like I'd go down there and and I inevitably I'd spend fifty bucks no matter what yeah I mean, just be on something yeah you know. 
So, and that was the fun of it. It was kind of this thing where, where it was like, you, you never knew what you were going to get, but there was always, place was always packed. And it, there was, it, typically you had real pro guys and you had novice people, but it all worked, but it was a social thing. It was yeah. like, and I can't tell you how many people I met at that store that became friends because of those stores. Oh yeah. They, they would walk and you'd go, Hey man, I play in this band and this band, and you know, and you you'd strike up these conversations, and then you those people would show up other days at the store and go, yeah. Oh hey man, you were here last week, yeah, yeah. So it oh, really, I'd you know, hang out for hours yeah, in these places. Yeah, it was like you take a you know a, an afternoon and like okay, I'm gonna waste three or four hours, yeah. and, and go, you know, and you did, but you it was cool, it was fun, you know. And unfortunately, like I said, with Guitar Center, it became this thing where one, it was to me, it was just too big. It's too, it was just too much at once, and this whole. You know, I, it just from the get go, it just it lost a lot of that charm for me, and 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 unfortunately, it did it put all of the really good music stores out of business. That's right. Time. Well, first of all, Mars Music they had Mars Music was a a chain that they had. I don't know if it was, it was a national chain or I mean, yeah, it was it was kind chain? of a southeast, but I think it was yeah up. It, it didn't go out west. I think it was just but it was it was a guitar center, but they didn't have as nice as stuff basically. Right. And and there was one that was probably a mile from the guitar center that went out of business, and then. Yeah. All the small stores started going out of business. There's almost no small stores. Yeah. Well, and it was because GC, like especially like what we're talking about with Midtown Music, you know, they were a Gibson Fender dealer, and Dave was trying to be the, you know, trying to be a dealer for those guys, and GC just cut them out of the picture. Yeah. And they just yeah. undercut them and said, well, and they were their whole thing was like, well, we're going to dominate this whole entire market. So anybody who has any kind of Gibson products, we're going to put them out of, we're just going to bury them. Well, and that's also why Gibson and Fender and Guitar Center are all kind of in the same financial boat right now. <laughs> yeah, that's because right. They, they linked up with each other right. and right. started forming these deals, which kicked all the small mom and pop shops out of business by, you know, if you want to be a Fender dealer, okay, you need, you need $50,000 of inventory and yeah. this much square footage of your space. Yeah dedicated to Fender stuff and they eventually were Gibson and they eventually made it to the point where it's like okay only if you are a guitar center or a guitar center level dealer can you be a Fender and Gibson dealer and so they built up this bubble between the three of them and then now that bubble's popping and yeah. they're all pretty much going down the drain together simultaneously mainly Gibson USA and Guitar Center and I think it's important to stress again if you didn't catch the Gibson video that we did first Gibson USA, Gibson Memphis, Gibson Custom Shop, and the Bozeman are pretty much all separate companies. Yeah. When we talk about Gibson going under, we're really talking about Gibson USA, USA. going under. Um, but again, that was the primary source of inventory for Guitar Center when it came to Gibson product. You know, they're yeah. occasionally like a really big flagship GC store in a city, like here we have the Druid Hills location, has a platinum room. Well, the Platinum Room and Guitar Centers are only going to be what hold the Fender Custom Shop, um, right. yeah. Gibson Custom Shop stuff. And that's because we live in a major metropolitan city, but most but the, of the but, guitar centers around don't have platinum yeah. rooms. Every time I go in the platinum room, there's never a soul. There's never oh, a nobody. person working in there. Nobody's working No one in there. works there. There used to be, in their yeah. platinum room, there used to be a pro guitar player, yeah. somebody that knew gear. You know, if something good came in, used, they would know it was good and they would take it in. But now you go in there. I've never seen anyone in there. I actually, actually I'll tell you why. So now it's they'll bring you stuff in and not check it because I actually got electrocuted by a '64 Super Reverb in, in the Platinum Room. I went to flip it off standby and got bit because they didn't check it. They're like, "Okay, this is cool. All right, twenty five hundred bucks. Slap yeah. slap a tag on it and plug it in." Yeah. And yeah, I mean. I mean, you know, that kind of stuff can happen to anybody, but it, it is a lot more prevalent now over there <laughs> that I've, I've noticed. It's, uh, in fact, I mean, I, <laughs> I know people that it's, it's basically known as the dumping ground. It's like, man, the, the, the guys who bring stuff over there that I've seen guys go, well, I know they don't check it, so I'm just going to take it over there and I'll put a car fuse in it. And if it, as long as it turns on and it works, I'm going to, you know. <laughs> And unfortunately, that's the case because there aren't pro guys working there that are going to be like, hey, man, this is screwed up and we're not going to take it or, you know, whatever. Yeah, so, or this is an original, right. you know, right. whatever whatever it might yeah. be. I was, I was in L.A. last September and 
you know, I, the first time I went to LA was with my dad in 2010. And so we like went to the LA Guitar Center and it's the big famous one that has the crazy big vintage room where they do those live shows and everything. Yeah. And when we went in 2010, it was genuinely an impressive collection of vintage stuff. I mean, they had four or five, you know, late 50s strats and then early to, to late 50s tellies. When I went back in September, my wife and I went back and I was pretty excited to go check out the vintage room again yeah. and it was all garbage. Yeah. They didn't have anything good in there. And what they had, they were trying to, they had a, it was a, a Gretsch Chet Atkins, I think it was like a 64 Chet that was literally unplayable. The neck was coming off of the body it was unplayable, and they wanted thirty five hundred bucks for it. Yeah, I believe it. I was like, "What are you doing?" Well, and, and yeah, and there again, the guys uh, that were running the vintage department were all gone. All those guys are gone. Um, Tim and the Burst Brothers guys, and some other people. You know, there again, they're they're cutting. They're, they've eliminated the pro people who work there, and so that's what you get. You get this hodgepodge of you don't, you know, yeah. uh, of of suspect inventory, uh, especially used. Um, so it's. Uh, it's it's interesting to see that uh, for a company that big and that driven by you know profit, you would think they would go, hey, you know, we gotta we gotta stock these stores with some people who know what they're doing, you right? Know? And we gotta pay them not ridiculous <clears throat> amount, but you gotta pay somebody decently so we can keep people coming back and you know pros coming back to the show, you know, stop store. And, and so, and granted, I mean, a lot of their market now is novice guitar players who are walking well, in. And but it is that you know. because they don't have the people. That's what I think. Right. Yes. I was just at Guitar Center about a month ago and I saw some guys that looked like they were senior people there. And I asked one of the managers that I yeah. do know, and he said, there's, there's the head of Guitar Center, basically, the mm -hmm. couple of the heads. And I said, really, how often they come? He said, come here. He said, never. Right. And I said, how are things with the store? And he said, they seem to be really psyched about things. This is then obviously the bankruptcy talk comes out three weeks later. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I would if I was if I would have had a chance to speak with him, I would have said, you guys got to get some musicians from town that are pros working here again. If you want to turn this place around, because I'll go, I'll go to Guitar Center and buy stuff. There's not that many places to go, really. Yeah, right. I went to to Righteous, and and that's a forty minute drive for me. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, there are again, luckily because we live in a major metropolitan city, we still do have a couple of like holdout, really cool stores. Righteous is one of them. Atlanta Discount yeah. Music is still holding on. They've been around since the '70s, you yeah. know. But other than that. Those two shops that I can think of off the top of my head, it's either those two options, which, like you said, Righteous is a 40, 45 minute drive for you. I mean, I have a music store that's a mile and a half away that I go to all the time because mm -hmm. when I need stuff, if I need to buy strings, things like that, that's a chain, Ken Stanton, that's yeah. a, a chain mm -hmm. here. And I know all the guys in here. They're all, all those guys used to work at Guitar Center, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I go there instead yeah. of driving to Guitar Center. I mean, right. it's, it's a five minutes, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but again, Ken Stanton primarily deals in like high school band instruments. That's, That's right. like the bulk of their their business. They don't do a lot of guitars, mid level, entry level to high end guitar dealing. I've never. I don't think I've ever bought a guitar there. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know. I haven't. Yeah. I think the one uh, the store out in Marietta is more stocked for guitars that I that I remember. Uh, last being out there, but it's, it's still that's, that's the one Rob's working at. Yeah, and and yeah. that one, like I said, is probably because there's a few guys who work out there that you know. <laughs> our ex holdouts from the old GC. The other end of this whole thing is, you know, there is there's a, a big difference in, in musical change right now as far as what's right. on the radio, what's, you know, I mean, you know, you listen to Top 40, man, and guitar is not prevalent in guitar in, in Top 40. Neither are drums. Most, neither are drums. <laughs> and ne you know, and or so, basses. Right. And so, <laughs> so you're, you know, that is a whole element that as much as, you don't want to think that it, you know. There's a whole element that it's a lot of those instruments are start. They are waning in sales because the younger generations that are coming up, or for various reasons, are not either sticking with it. Or if they do play a little bit, they only play for you know a couple of years, and they're like, ah, screw it, uh, you know. Or you've got music that is completely devoid of all organic music instruments so you're you're that right there you're <laughs> yeah your market goes way down you know um even guys like i mean uh, up in nashville you know guitar shops that i know all of those guys say the same thing like yeah you know it's 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 
still holding on, but we, you know, you see that the the age group is starting to get older yeah. and older, and there's less younger and younger kids coming in that want like a guitar, you know. So it's it is a, I think a musical thing too, you know, at least where we're at in music history. But um, but I think the biggest problem with Guitar Center is definitely the sales force that they have on the floor, exp you know, unexperienced people, and 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 it's, and it's just a management style, and management, honestly, right? Because ultimately, and, that that's where it comes from. Is yeah, is uh, yeah. the decisions are not being made at the store; they're made made regionally. You're right. right. Or uh, or you and know. I and I know from working at the one at eighty five years ago, um, you know the, that store eighty five was run a little different than the rest of the. Oh yeah, yeah, because that's the second biggest store in the country. And I remember like the guys that I worked with who later on went on and, and still work. Some of them still work for the company. Some of them are gone. But um, you know we kind of had a little of a different niche in that store because there was a holdover from Rhythm City. Yeah, and a lot of those guys. Um, you know, Rhythm City is, is 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 whether you've liked them or not, they were the biggest store in town at the time. Yeah. And, you know, they were run a certain way and I mean they were as far as new stuff, they didn't really do used stuff, but as far as new stuff, man, that was like they had everything. I yeah. mean you went over there and it was like yeah, there's nothing here that either, and if they didn't have it, they'd get it for you. Like, yeah. if you walked in and say, I want this, this, that, they'd be like, on the phone, like, okay, you got the cash? Well, yeah, we'll get it for you. Don't yeah. worry. I mean, you know. Um, <laughs> so that kind of held over. So 80, the 85 store was a little different than the rest of the ones in the chain. Um, but I even knew when I was working there, I was like, yeah, this is going to end too, though, because as soon as all of these guys kind of get out of here, it's there, there's nobody to replace those guys. You know, it's interesting, you know? too, because... Not only was there were there people coming in and buying instruments to play, you also had all the hip hop people that are in Atlanta that were yeah. in there yeah. buying all pro audio oh, stuff, dude, buying used, microphones, yeah. buying preamps, buying keyboards, yeah. everything. Like Andre Two Thousand was always there. You yeah, had like you know Prof Professor Griff. You had all these local guys that were heavy rap guys that came in. And um, you know Keith Sweat and all those guys. And you know it was like they that's where they went. Right. You know and now. Like you said, is there even a, a department over there for them to? to no, do? there's, there's not. not. So you, you can't even like, hang out. You get, you're right. You're right next to the door where a person's stamping your receipts. Right. right. Hey, can I check out that mic? Oh, let me just stamp hey, your receipt. That, hey, and, and honestly, that person's not even there anymore. The last three or four times. I've <laughs> no, they're in, not. I've like stood there waiting for someone to come stamp my thing. I'm like, I'm just gonna leave. Without you looking at it, and like, see when I worked there, man, it was like Fort Knox getting oh, out you of could the not, You yeah. had two people. You had one stand, and then the other one looked. The other one, so it was. <laughs> They'd look in your bag. Yeah. They'll do oh, everything. Yeah. They, it was it was a totally different run thing. You know, now it, like I said, it's like Best Buy's now. You really is yeah. Best Buy's. Yeah. You, know, you walk in, it's like I want Widget A. Okay, you have it. It's cheap. I'll take it. Let me get out of here. That's the best. That's the best kind of correlation to to compare it to is Best Buy and Guitar Center. Because I think they're run at the, the corporate level, at the leadership level, they're run the exact same way. I mean, Guitar yeah. Center is owned by a, a financial holding company. Yeah. They don't do anything musical. I, I bet nobody in the leadership of that company is, if they do play, it's not probably not more than a hobby, you know? So they, they don't... Yeah, I don't know. But they're, it's definitely, you can tell it's, it's, it is. It's run, it's a, it's run like, a, like a big box store. You yeah. Know? It's, it's just how it is. I mean... You know, and as, as much as I hate, I don't like to see any music store go out of business or be in trouble or whatever, but, you know, if this is the catalyst to bring back small mom pop shops, I, honestly, I'm all for it because I think it'll, it, it helps everybody. Yeah. I think it'll help the music industry. I think it'll help the local markets. You'll have a lot more shops that will be, you know, run the way shops should be run. And you, there'll be more interest. I mean, I can tell you right yeah. now, if there was three or four great other stores in town, for, I'd, I'd go to them. I yeah. would too. <laughs> Everything is And as bad as Atlanta traffic is, yeah. I'd actually get in my car and go drive across town if there's a cool shop on. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, that that whole there. saying that everything is local is really yeah. true. Yeah. If these are places that you can go to hang and be part of a scene yeah. and talk to other musicians, you're going to go there. I'd love to do that. I, I yeah. I sit here in the studio all the time. I don't interact with anyone ever until unless these guys come over. So, <laughs> or unless you do a live stream. Yeah, unless unless you do a live stream. stream. I, yeah. See, the thing is, I'm not totally convinced that if Guitar Center closes, we're going to see a real resurgence of mom and pop shops. At least yeah. not back to what it was. Because if you look at brick and mortar retail across the board, yeah. everyone's hurting. Yeah, and it's yeah. because of Amazon. 
and you know online retailers. Reverb. So, sure. Reverb, which sure. is Chicago Music Exchange. You know, yep. I mean, and that's that's a great example of a store that seems to be alive and well. But they're alive and well because they started an online yes. gear trading community. And they're run by pros. And they're run by and, pros. And that, and that store, I mean, is like, I would put that store in, in, in the top 20 stores in the country oh, for, for what sure. they do. You know, so, yeah, I mean, they, and they've been around a long time. Yeah, you know, and, that, and that's not a store that just opened up. So it's, And locally, like for us, Righteous Guitars, you know, they are more of a niche dealer. They deal more in the high-end and boutique stuff and vintage stuff. But that store is run by pros. Jeff was one yeah. of the old school GC guys yeah. from back well, in the I, day. I, I said, man, when's the last time I saw you? He said, well, I've been working here two and a half years. I said, boy, I don't. I guess I don't go in the <laughs> Guitar Center very often anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's... But the thing is, when you go into Righteous Guitars, they have rooms that you can go to to, yeah. to try out stuff. They have people that wait on you that really know what... They know everything about the guitars that you're trying. I can't believe they have no basses in there. Was I imagining that? No, I don't think there's any. If there's, I did a live stream from there. Those of you that saw it, and somebody said, "Where's all the basses?" And I'm looking around. There's some 750 guitars. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's no basses. What? No, that's like not an exaggeration. I think there's they literally, literally have like, no basses. Well, and like literally, there's like five or six hundred guitars in there or something like yeah. crazy like that. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. So gross, yeah. But yeah, again, like I know that when I go to Righteous, Ben and Jeff and those guys are going to take care of me. Even the younger guys that they have working there, you can tell, are working there and being trained and like yeah. brought up. They're, they know a ton about guitars and the instruments and their inventory that they sell. And so it's one of those shops that you can go in. Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Discount Music is the same way. Absolutely. Jimmy, yeah. Down there. Jimmy's like, been there forever. Every single pedal I've, I have on my board and I've ever bought has come from those guys because I walk in yeah. and I talk to Jimmy. He knows me. He knows what I like. I've been going there for 10 years and I yep. say, okay, man, I'm looking for this and I've considered these three pedals. He'd be like, okay, well check this out. I really, you like know, that's this. the thing. That's interesting. Cause, cause, um, with pedals, you can watch online demos of pedals, but you don't really know what they sound like. You got to bring your guitar down there. You got to play through them yourself. Mm -hmm. You, you know, don't know what they sound like until you play. Until through you play it. through them. Because yeah. so, if I do a demo or something on my channel, it's going to sound like me playing through X, Y, or Z piece of gear, and it may sound great. You may like it. You may hate it. But until you go down and play it yourself, you're not going to. For me, I'm yeah. such an impulse buyer, anyways. Too. I want to. I want to you know, play through something. Oh, I like that. Usually I'll go down looking for something, then I try something else and that's what I get. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, it's a whole nother market now. It's, it's like, you know, cause uh, even just when you walk into like guitar center, you listen to the level of people playing on things. Oh yeah. And you go, you know, I used to go to the music store and I'd be like, you know, you'd hear two or three guys coming here like, man, who the hell is that guy? That guy's amazing. You know? I can't. I don't remember the last time I walked into a music store and, and said that to myself. Like, man, that guy is real. You know, I gotta you know. say this: that the last three times I've gotten into Guitar Center, I've um, I've really heard almost no one play at all, which is really even worse. Yeah, yeah. There's no worse. one trying yeah. out instruments right, right. ever. Yeah. So, anyways, leave your thoughts in the comments here. I'd like to thank Dave and Rhett once again, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah.